Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll be delving into the world of structural design and exploring one of its most crucial components, connections. We'll take a closer look at the different types of connections, rigid, semi-rigid, and pinned, and discuss why it's essential to consider their behavior during analysis. We'll also explore the guidelines provided in EC3 and XJ for modeling connections, in a way that accurately reflects their expected behavior under relevant loading. So, whether you're a structural engineer or simply interested in the world of design, this video is for you. Let's get started. So, what exactly is a rigid connection? Well, a rigid connection is incredibly stiff, and its flexibility doesn't significantly affect the bending moment diagram of the structure. On the other hand, a semi-rigid connection is more flexible than a rigid connection, but still not as flexible as a pinned connection. As you might imagine, the behavior of a semi-rigid connection must be considered during the analysis of the structure. Now let's take a closer look at pinned connections. Pinned connections are very flexible and can be treated as a pin for analysis purposes. Connections with a capacity of less than 25% of the beam moment capacity are commonly regarded as pinned. It's crucial to note that elastic analysis programs only consider the stiffness of the connection and don't take into account its flexibility. Typically, connections designed based solely on strength considerations are considered to be rigid. As we move forward, let's explore the limits that define rigid pinned and semi-rigid connections, and discuss how connection stiffness can be assessed. In structural analysis, connections are commonly modeled as either completely rigid or completely pinned. However, this isn't entirely accurate as all connections have some degree of flexibility or stiffness. To take a more rigorous approach to modeling connections, two critical questions need to be addressed. Firstly, what are the limits that define a rigid, pinned, or semi-rigid connection? Secondly, how stiff is the specific connection being analyzed? To determine the stiffness limits, moment rotation curves are used to differentiate between rigid, semi-rigid, and pinned connections. However, there is no consensus on the slope of these dividing lines. For instance, in the UK, the slope of 2 times EI divided by L has been suggested as the division between rigid and semi-rigid, while EC3 and XJ offers two alternatives, A times EI divided by L for braced frames and 25 times EI divided by L for unbraced frames. The slope of the line between pinned and semi-rigid connections is given as 0.5 times EI divided by L in an XJ. Now, to assess the actual connection stiffness, testing is the only accurate method at present. Although methods of calculating connection stiffness do exist, many structural designers have little confidence in the predictions made in the current version of Annex J. Therefore, assessments of connection stiffness are usually subjective. In the UK, pinned connections are typically defined by their moment capacity, with connections having a maximum capacity of less than 25% MP regarded as pinned, provided they have some ductility or freedom to rotate. Now, we're going to be talking about how to model connections in structural analysis. Specifically, we'll be looking at the guidelines provided in EC3 Annex J, which aim to ensure that connections are modeled in a way that accurately reflects their expected behavior under relevant loading. Moving on, firstly we need to understand that connections have different levels of stiffness, which can affect how they behave under different loads. In order to accurately model connections, we need to consider the assumptions made in the analysis and ensure that the connection design reflects the real details. Now, let's take a closer look at the different ways to model connections, including using nodes at the intersection of member central lines nodes offset from member central lines, or special deformable connection elements. This helps to accurately locate the support of a pin-ended beam. 
When it comes to beams with pinned connections to columns, nominal moments should be applied to columns, and some design programs include this facility in the design module. Alternatively, the nodes may be situated eccentric to the columns to produce the final moments in the column lengths. Short stubs from the column center line are generally modeled as the beam section. However, when the connection is some distance from the column center line, the modeling becomes more complex. For example, in the case of a hollow section beam to column connection, if the beams are not site welded to the columns, but bolted via end plates, the connection must be made some way from the face of the column. The bending moment diagrams can be rigid or pinned, depending on the flange plate beam to beam connection and flange plate and beam to column connections. To accurately model connections in these cases, we need to consider the real details of the connection. For example, the welded connection to the columns may be perceived to be more rigid than pinned, and the correct model for analysis would be the pin-connected flange plate beam to beam connection designed for shear alone. Alternatively, with a relatively thin column wall, the local bending stiffness at the face of the column may be the most flexible part of the connection, which could be assessed as an equally valid option. Next, let's examine the complexities that arise in the design of bracing systems, including issues related to modeling the connections between beams, columns, and bracing elements. In the design of bracing systems, there can often be confusion between the structural designer and the connection designer. This is because bracing, columns, and floor beams are typically modeled on centerline intersections, but this can cause problems. In reality, the vertical shear in the beam-to-column connection should include the vertical component of the bracing force and the horizontal component is transferred directly to the beam. However, when the bracing force is resolved into horizontal and vertical components at the connection to the beam, it can induce bending in the beam, which is not accounted for in the analysis based on centerline intersections. This can lead to omitting the force components from the inclined bracing. Finally, we will address some common issues with bracing systems and discuss more appropriate models for analysis. Specifically, when the bracing angle is shallow or steep, more appropriate models for analysis are needed. As such, it is recommended to use stocky members with high inertia for the stubs from the main members to the bracing. Moreover, the bracing connections to the stubs should be modeled as pins, with rigid connections between the stubs and the main frame elements. Alternatively, the bracing can be set out to the face of the column, which simplifies the connection but adds a bending moment to the column. Moving on to our recommendations for modeling connections in beam and column structures, it is important to note that the current practice suggests using centerline intersections for analysis, even though real eccentricities may exist and should be considered during member design. This can cause problems, particularly when it comes to bracing systems. Bracing should also be set out with nodes at the intersections of member centralines for the initial analysis. Furthermore, a second analysis may be completed with stub members between bracing and main members, or the real effects may be included manually. It is crucial to convey the design loads for connections to the connection designer and appropriately combine load factors to avoid unrealistic combinations of connection forces, which can lead to expensive connections. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into the world of structural connections. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you want to learn even more about this topic, check out the resources in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.